Good morning, pregame crew. How are y'all doing? It is Friday, January 7th, 8.23 a.m. Eastern, 6.23 a.m. Mountain Time. We have the jobs report in seven minutes. Please, please, please remember jobs report in seven minutes. We have the swing report annual sale that ends Sunday. Promo code SWING2022. So, we will be ready for the report. So if you plan on trading the report, I would strongly advise for you, of course, to have your brokerage platform open and also have all your levels clearly marked. So if price pauses at those levels, that could be an area to short or go long. Oh, thanks, Chuck. Good morning, Topher, Steven, Jorge, Chris, Diego, Tammy, Aaron, Greg, Night Truck. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining me on this last day of the week. I hope you had a wonderful trading week, trading day. And if you didn't, that's okay. Dust yourself off and just probably the best course of action today is to sit on your hands. It is Friday. And you know they how they spell Friday for traders. It's Friday, so you get fried a lot. So Friday is for lottos for me. I like playing lottos on Friday and I don't do it every Friday, especially if I've had a rough week, I definitely don't trade on Friday. If I've had a great week and I want to put a small percentage of those profits at risk, it makes sense to do so. But otherwise, I think sitting on your hands is the best course of action, especially if the sell-off rattled you. And I know it rattled a lot of people. We can always tell by the viewership. So if we have tons of viewers, 20, 30% increase on the pregame show, the market recap video, whatever it may be, it tells us there's fear creeping into the market. Good morning, Bash. Hey, Mark, Karkuki, Argilio. Yeah, that game price action was crazy. I have it on my list today. Hey, Donald. If anyone has a chart request, I'll go over it real quickly before the jobs numbers come out. Yeah, GameStop was pretty wild. So GameStop announced they're entering the NFT space, which is non-fungible tokens. It's related to blockchain and crypto and it got a big spike. So that was interesting based on news. This was, I, I don't like the word easy in trading. I can't stand it when people say something's easy because if it's easy, why aren't you a bajillionaire and why are you still trading? So AMC, however, had a sympathy pop with GameStop on no news. So that was a straightforward short. I guess that's a better word, just very straightforward. And using this prior support as resistance and using that to top fish AMC made a lot of sense. I wasn't near the computer. I was doing important things like getting my nails done after hours yesterday. So missed that trade setup, but we like those straightforward high conviction setups. You're welcome, Tammy. Good morning. Okay, crypto moves. I uh let's see. CL futures. Oh, we're gonna go over oil. We're gonna go over Ford. And we're gonna go over Google. Man, it's like y'all got my whole list today. Hood, hood please. All right, let's look at it. Hood is in black dirt breakdown. So we use the word black dirt breakdown, meaning there is no support below you. Yesterday we had a new all time low of 1480 and bounced. So now that becomes the level. If you want a bottom fish hood and you say, okay, if it comes near $15 again, I will try to bottom fish it. It's a nice risk to reward, meaning low risk because your stop is nearby and nice reward if you nail that bottom. However, we don't hand out trophies for nailing bottom. Sorry, we don't give out Oscars. We don't give out trophies. We don't call your name if you nail the bottom. It's just between you and the Lord. So most of the time it just ends up in a lot of knife wounds. So just make sure those wounds are little nicks and you have, you're entering near support. So I like a bottom fish of hood compared to 1480. And remember, RSI doesn't matter. So even though the daily is still oversold, we have a little bit of bullish divergence actually, but it doesn't matter because black dirt breakdown. And remember, on the way up, when you're down this much on the year, you're gonna have to deal with all of the baggage and luggage overhead. So Sally Sue, who bought at $23, is gonna say, I'm handing you my Birkin. When, you co when price comes up, they're gonna unload. Nancy bought at $29. She's gonna hand you her Dooney and Burke. 
Johnny bought it $35. He's going to hand you his coach bag. All of these bags overhead is going to suppress price. So when we're bottom fishing, it sounds fun for a bit. And you just want to get that initial bears covering. And you want to watch for bull volume for real bulls wanting to buy it and own it at these prices. Yeah, hit the like button, please. Yep, no trophies. LRC got the same pump. Yeah, LRC was related, right? LRC is an altcoin. It got a little pump right when GameStop had that news. It's back down. Wow, that was a straightforward short as well. And you see, I'm using the word straightforward, not easy. Clear, clear levels to top fish. And if I don't say it every day, shame on me, but price action is king, queen, prince, and princess. All right. Let's get back to ES. So levels are important. So I'm going to jump to the five minute, actually two minute chart here on the reaction. If anyone's in the room and sees the actual numbers, please post it. That'd be helpful, but not necessary. I don't always look at the numbers. I truly could care less. Of course, I want everyone that wants a job to have a job. I'm not talking about fundamentally I don't care, but technically I don't care. I'm just going to trade price action. Makes my life infinitely easier. So, got a little channel. Possible wedge, let's see. This is the move, okay, there we go. You can buy Bitcoin on Coinbase. All right, this is a quite a bullish reaction. But typically the first reaction is not the real reaction. So let's see. We ran straight into resistance. We're at four, we hit 47, 4,700. So we hit that resistance and now we're pulling back slightly. So go back to the one minute. Once this one minute candle closes, that becomes the level to beat. 4,700 is the level to beat. Anybody, let me go. I don't see the numbers yet. Uh, 199 versus 400 expected. Thank you, Mr. Fabulous. Just posted it in our room. Hey, Steven, I got into, so I'm gonna watch this data real quick and then I will answer that question because I get that question a lot and I rarely get, it t get time to answer it. So 470150, we just ran into this resistance here. So we did have that falling wedge coming into the report. That nice two-minute falling wedge gave us a little bit of a clue. But watch for a reversal here. Typically, the first reaction is not the real reaction. All right, it's 6.31. I'm going to get started. Hi, I'm Chart Gal Lori. I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. And you have found yourself at the pregame show. So for approximately 25 minutes, I ripped through charts at a very fast pace. If it's too fast, just pause it and rewind it. I don't mean to skim over levels. I just have a lot of data to get through. We have a swing report special that's ending Sunday. It's normally $6.99 and it is swing 2022 promo code, 22% off for the year. This is the last, it, it's only on sale once a year. Sunday, it's over. Over, over. So go take advantage of that. If you don't follow me on Twitter, why not? Chark Al Lori, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to go over the indices. We're going to go over some market moving indicators I'm looking at. We're going to go crypto, commodities, movers, and shakers. We have awesome mods that are in the room. I'll answer whatever questions you may have. If you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen now. I'm going to delete it to make space more real estate. So there's that reversal we were looking for, jobs number today. And then we have feds. So some of the fed members, they are scheduled to speak at certain times. It's not always uh, Powell. I don't remember who's speaking today, but that will happen mid morning. And sometimes guys like Bullard, they talk and then down we go. So just be careful. Know that this is not the only market moving event today. The jobs number, we have the fed speaking midday. And it is my contention that the hourly RSI of 50 is key to get over in order to get some more movement in any potential bounce. And the slight problem the bulls have today is 
the they cooled off RSI yesterday. So let's go look at that. Yes, news. We have jobs number. So on the four hour, we were oversold yesterday morning and I told y'all I was looking for that dead cat bounce. We opened up the day, four hour oversold. We're not four hour oversold anymore. Look at Amazon, 34, Google, 33, Apple, 31. We're not oversold, we're close. So another push down would definitely get us oversold again. But yesterday's price action, this sideways stuff, all it did was cool off RSI. And that just opens the door for the bears to step in and bring it down again. Bring it down to the next level. Oh, awesome, Patrick. That's great news. Thanks for sharing. Support 467875 on ES. This initial reaction high, we rejected at 470150. And now that becomes the level to beat. Otherwise, we'll stay within this range, 4678, 4701. Normally, we get extremes to the upside and to the downside, and then we level out. If we don't level out and we start breaking these 4678 support and then 4662, then really be careful. And I'm going to be watching market internals at open. I always disregard the very first opening print on tick, and then it's that second, third, fourth one on the five minute. And I'm watching that eight minute excuse me, the five minute eight EMA to make sure it's above the zero line for bullish plays, below the zero line for bearish plays. We have a strong possibility of having a trend day. And I'm telling you, you will make the most money in your trading career on trend days and being able to identify those trend days early on. I don't know if it's gonna be trend day bearish or bullish, bullish too early to tell, but it, the odds favor bears. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So on the four hour, I want you to look at these EMAs. I talk about Sotima, slope of the EMA. Let me type it out, my accent sometimes, I don't enunciate well. Slope of the EMAs, Sotima. So we know with slope from high school geometry that these are. this is a very sharp slope here. This is very sharp. This 21 EMA is more like a 45 degree. This is super short, sharp. Let's say 70, whatever. I, I don't have my compass <laughs> or my protractor, whatever, handy. So that means the bears are driving the car 70 miles an hour. If it's like this on the 8 EMA, they're driving it 45 miles an hour. If it's like this, they're driving it 25 miles an hour. And these, these are terrible analogies, and you're just going to have to deal with it because I love y'all and y'all love me. But that just shows the momentum the bears have. That momentum is hard to stop. Think about a car that's going 70 miles an hour and what it takes to bring it to zero and stop that momentum. It's hard. And that's the bears have it right now. With this eight EMA, and even if it's the 12 EMA, whatever it is, the way that it's sloped downward, it just shows that downward momentum and cooling off that RSI to the degree that they did without a more significant bounce. So let's look at it from a FIB perspective. Had we cooled off RSIs to the 50% retrace, that's a different animal. Because <clears throat> then we've given ourselves enough room for a higher low. We did not give ourselves enough room for a higher low on any of these charts. RTY, I was looking at the most this morning because RTY is that risk on and risk off. I, was, I thought that was cool earlier how it was prior resistance. It's acting as support, but here we go. So RTY is now losing the hourly uptrend. We broke this level. RTY is that risk on, risk off indicator. If, if people are investing in small and mid caps, that means they're not as scared of the market. When they get scared, RTY is the first thing they sell. So RTY lost the hourly uptrend now. NASDAQ has not. ES has lost the hourly uptrend. 6E is a setup if you trade Forex, futures. I just want to bring it to your attention. If you trade crypto and you use euro as your denominator or dollar, I think this is important for us to know. I'm definitely not a currency expert. However, I do know how to read a chart. We have monthly inside bars on 6E. So let's look at the six month chart. So on the six month, we are looking for a lower low, lower high, higher low, lower high. Now we have plenty of room for a higher low relative to 106 on the six month chart. Got it? So we got this picture in our head. 
On the euro, we're looking for the six month high or low. Now let's look at the dollar. Dollar opposite day because it goes opposite to the euro. Higher high, higher low, lower high, higher low. Now we're looking for that lower high. So with the dollar, we're looking bearish on the six month chart. And on the euro, we're looking bullish on the six month chart. So let me go back to the dollar and show you that monthly chart. So we got monthly inside bars on the dollar, just like the euro has monthly inside bars. So we're getting tight here. And it is my contention we have a bullish setup on 6E going into the next six to nine months and bottom fishing. I feel like I'm yelling this morning. Why am I yelling? Bottom fishing this 12475. You see, I have an alert set there. I want to be long 6E if we get near that area. So just something if you trade Forex, you could trade the appropriate pair that corresponds with this setup. If you don't trade futures or Forex, you could trade FXE. FXE, here's those monthly inside bars. It, it is the equivalent to 6E, and you can trade puts and calls on it. All right, enough of that. 10 year. Okay, RSI getting in the low teens. Okay, one second. Let me go back. We may have a day trade here. I would like that better if the hourly RSI were stacked as well. We like waterfall waterfall flushes to the downside, but we want those waterfall flushes to line up with hourly, 15 minute. Do y'all see this? Look at this, that 50 RSI rejected price. I'm telling you, pay attention to that 50 RSI. So we're coming in hot to 15598. That's the January 6th low. And the most important is this December 20th low of 15492. That is the level that we must watch. If we break that, what, look out below. So 1559850 is the next support that we're coming in hot to. I would like this oversold bounce if the hourly were oversold as well. Getting a little hammer forming here. And on any bounce, we're looking for two minute and five minute lower highs. So if you miss this flush down, you could be looking around 15700. Wait for a little two minute lower high, lower low to top fish. All right. Uh, oh, I was doing US 10 year. Okay, of course it's flying. It is going for a monthly, it got a monthly bull break, but it's going over, I think it's a quarterly. The US 10 year is looking for a quarterly bull break over 1774. This is the highest price we've seen on the 10 year yield in two years. So it is negatively impacting NASDAQ and NASDAQ has no hope of a bullish day if this doesn't chill the freak out. So sorry about the semi curse word. It must chill out. All right. RTY on the hourly, your next support below this low of the reaction, 2192 and 2174. 2102 is the December 20th low. And what RTY bulls are all around the world are looking for, all around the world, is this potential for an inverse head and shoulders on RTY. But RTY is definitely the weakest in this risk off environment. YM? YM, we're breaking the lows of yesterday. Your next support is down at 35759. So 36,000 psychological, then 35759. So remember, Dow's been holding us up this week. So if the Dow's going to roll over and everything's going to roll over, we got problems. So when NASDAQ was going down, what was that? Wednesday? I'm getting my days mixed up. When the, when the market was going down, the Dow was up at all-time highs, XLF up at all-time highs. And it kept us from the worst case scenario of a major flush. It kept us from that. So we need Dow to step up and XLF to step up. If the 10-year yield, let me write this out. If the US 10-year is screaming higher, bearish NQ, we need YM and XLF because XLF is positively and bullishly influenced by a high 10-year yield that we need YM and XLF to hold us up. Otherwise, all sectors bearish and look for a major 
bearish trend day. And I always have to preface everything with a potential or likely or most probable so you understand everything is just probabilities. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. Okay, the VIX, I was looking at this uh, hourly diamond bearish reversal pattern, but we're breaking bull out of that now. It's probably better on the two hour. So we have this lower high, higher low, and now we've got the higher high. Odds favor a lower high. Let's draw this ellipse here and hopefully the ellipse does its magic like it always does. 2106, we're looking for a lower high compared to 2106. Now, if the feds come out today, midday, when they're talking and their messages are highly, highly hawkish and they are saying interest rate hikes, uh, inflation, inflation, and transitory, tr it's not transitory, it's not transitory, then the VIX could break 2106. And then your next resistance is up at 2119. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a risky asset class. So Bitcoin was going down last night and that was a clue, even though the market was holding up because we saw last week, do y'all remember last week or was it the week before when Bitcoin on a Monday was going down and the market was going up and then Dan later put, uh, put the pieces together and said, oh, that was our clue. Bitcoin is a risky asset class. They were throwing it away. And then the next day the market had the down move. So Bitcoin last night was going down while the market was holding itself up was a clue that we could be moving down today. Nothing scary. I don't see anything super scary happening yet, but it's definitely not constructive for bulls yet. Okay, now this is just a dead cat bounce. Bears will be waiting here. All right, I have five minutes left and I'm not even through the futures, but I'm just going to keep talking. How about that? We talked about that, talked about that. Bitcoin. On Bitcoin, we're looking for a monthly higher low compared to 28,800, but this does not bode well for the bulls that we've given back this much of this stellar move. Wait, I took my magnet off one second. We are at the, we are below the golden pocket of the retrace now. I like to put 0.707 on my charts, again, I'm just really random today, but I learned in trading when I first started trading that some of the banks will signal each other who they are by using seven. So like Chase likes to use seven. So if you see a $700,000 block of Apple, that's probably Chase. So I'm generalizing here, but I have seen 0.707 work in FIB. So I just keep it on my chart. And we're right there at that level, 40578. Looking for a monthly high or low. But man, look at that. We just rejected right at that golden pocket. But the bulls have a lot of work to do. Ethereum, weaker. We broke this 311250 by 50 cents and now we're bouncing definitely weaker. And someone asked uh, earlier, how did I get into trading? So let's stay with the randomness. I sold my business uh, when I was whatever. I sold my business, I was young, and I thought that I could retire. And I go look at my 401k, I look at the proceeds from the sale, and I'm like, um, my 401k, my IRA is trash. My financial advisor put everything in a REIT for 12% uh, commission. I found out later and it was locked up and I could do nothing about it. And I had definitely did not have enough money to retire despite how hard I had worked for those eight years building that business. And I said, I have an MBA, I can figure this out. And come to find out the MBA has absolutely nothing to do with stocks. It doesn't really help you unless you're going to start analyzing PE ratios and EBITDA multiples, then maybe, but otherwise it doesn't help you. And that's how I got into trading. And I came to TCG in February of 2017 with my tail tucked between my legs and I had lost money on that gas and oil and I was carrying bags of UGAS and UWT and I started learning from Dan and I chatted with Jason and the rest is history. And I picked up a lot. I asked a ton of questions. And then I started BYOC, bring your own chart on Sundays, reviewed charts. And the more I taught, the more I learned. And I decided that if I'm gonna make this my career, I'm gonna work harder than anybody else. And my goal is to outwork every single person. I've spent probably at this point, tens of thousands of hours looking at charts and I will forever do this until the day I die. I love, 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 love this career. 
And I like that you can't learn everything. Every day I learn something new and I like that. So y'all didn't ask for all that, or one of you did, but there you go. So on gold, this was yesterday's support and it's pretty cool, it's acting as resistance. So I left it on the chart. We got a pretty big spike there. We're bouncing, what's the dollar doing? Okay, so the dollar's pulling back, that's helping gold. So gold resistance is the high of the reaction, 1796. And then above 1796 is 1800. And your support's the low of the reaction, 1781. I still don't like oil. Oil is super bullish right here, super bullish. I'm still looking for this weekly higher low, so I can't be bullish here. So it's either I'm bearish or I sit on my hands. And at this point, I'm sitting on my hands. I'm waiting for the at least a 15 minute to, ch to change. Okay, NG. NG, we're in a weekly inside bar. Y'all, if y'all love NG, y'all close your ears for the next 30 seconds. I can't stand this. This is trash. It's a trashy setup right now. It's just really tight and it's very erratic and I can't trade it. So I can't trade it here. If you can, God bless you. And maybe you need to have your own pregame show if you can teach this or trade this, I should say. All right, Apple. We nailed that yesterday, didn't we? That 172, that was fun. Got a $3 pop and then it gave it all back. And now we're looking at 171.31. So on the weekly is the most important for me, for Apple, 16746 must hold. On the hourly, the bears have the momentum with these EMAs. They totally have the momentum. We got to get over 173.71 as step one for a bullish trade. But I can't believe I'm saying this on a Friday, but I don't see an Apple trade. I don't see a, I can't with a good conscience tell you to go long here. And with this weekly uptrend, I can't tell you to go short either. And we're oversold. Four hour RSI, if we get one more push down, and let's say we hit 25 RSI on the hourly closer to 169. So that's my number today to possibly look for a long is 169 on Apple. Uh, yes, I was in healthcare. I, I manage physicians businesses. So I, I was in the healthcare management billing. I created a software with a guy. We had a mobile charge capturing system. I was a certified coder. So I specialize actually in nephrology billing. So in management. And I said that I was, a, I herded cats for a living. And that's probably very accurate. AMC, I'd look to short any bounce. So there's the magic yellow rectangle. I'd look to short 2444. If we get closer to 2619, then so be it, I would short it there. AMC is a straightforward short for me today. BBBY got a bajillion downgrades. I can't count that high. Uh, 1547, 1550, if it were to bounce in that area, I would look to short it. CCL, I left the magic yellow box yesterday where I had it, it exceeded that box and then we got a lower high top fish opportunity and down she went. And it also went down on that RC Royal Caribbean uh, short report by Hindenburg. So it was a sympathy play as well. On a bounce up to 2156, 2160 area, I'd look to short it again. Ford, you're not gonna believe what I'm gonna say. You're not gonna believe it. Cause y'all know we killed Ford a few weeks ago. I think Ford's a short. We hit this 2509 double top and I would take it all the way to 2515. I would short forward up to 2515. I know. Yeah, I know y'all can't believe I'm saying it. It's a major bull and it has been. And I don't even know if I can give you a technical reason because I don't like the word just extended. But we're just at a clear double top area, 25, 25, 15. FRC, triple daily inside bars. This should be a fun one for you stratters. I would definitely be watching this one if banks have a strong day. I would watch XLF. If XLF is bullish, I would look to play this to the long side before the break. If XLF is XLF is bearish, I'd look to short it. I would definitely be looking bearishly at FRC. So watch XLC, XLF to position yourself in FRC. GM, I'm saying it as well. I would look short. Let me go back to the hourly so you can see. Y'all know I don't like the hourly 50 MA. When it's overhead, it is a nuisance to bulls. So I would look to short 2385. 
what did I just say? 63.85. All the way up to $64, I would look to short GM, shorting that hourly 50 MA, possible rejection with a price action confluence. Game. That's awesome, Patrick. I I helped my sister get in Ford and she her account killed it, but I sold it the other day at 24.60. So, I'm just sitting on my hands right now and I'm going to help her get back in. I love Ford, but just it's extended and we're at a clear double top. And I don't like where the market is. GameStop? I don't know. My my gut said to short it, but now I'm second guessing myself. So I'm just going to skip this one, okay? Those are the levels if you need them. And don't forget yesterday's high could serve as support on a pullback. I would be looking to short this. And especially because it's crypto related, the news and crypto is bearish. So maybe I just answered my own question. I would look bearish only on GameStop. Google. You're welcome. Yep, they're increasing production. They doubled it for the lightning. Okay, Google, I like short. Yesterday, I liked it long. But the way that it gave back those gains, any bounce toward 2800, I would look to short. NVIDIA, NVIDIA did something nobody else did yesterday. It took me two hours to do the whiteboard. And if you're like, what's the whiteboard? Let me show you. So, every morning, most mornings, well, there you go, Lord. Most mornings, Dan does the whiteboard. He's been out, so today I did it, and it took me two hours to do this. So those are all the marijuana, support, resistance, commodities, Bitcoin, Ethereum. We go over the VIX. We give you the economic calendar. This morning was out of order because I was doing it. XLF, Gold, XBI, SPY, IWM, QQQ, Amazon, Facebook, NVIDIA, Apple, Google, Tesla, BA, NEO. I mean, what other community does that? It was It's crazy, but it did help me this morning. It sh showed me the only name I was watching that we were looking at that got an hourly trend change was NVIDIA. Now, it didn't do it with a lot of pizzazz. It did it by 40 cents, but dang it, it's still an hourly trend change. So NVIDIA, I like to the long side because of what it did yesterday. And I was looking at AMD. I think semis are positioned well if NASDAQ can get a bounce going. Tesla, I like long. So I like NVIDIA and Tesla long. Okay. So th let me get my color straight. FRC, I don't have an op opinion or Apple. I just, FRC is a triple daily inside bar. Apple is in no man's land for me, but I feel like I have to cover it because it's a general. And so I'm bearish almost everything. My only bullish setups are NVIDIA and Tesla. All right. Jason will be live in four minutes. Yeah, I think F Lotto puts would be great today. That's what I'm suggesting, yes. Do I have thoughts on AMD? Sure, Austin, since this is your first time here live, let's look at it. So this is what I was drawing out for AMD. On the weekly, we're looking for a higher low, Austin. So we got the higher high, higher low, lower high. Now we need a higher low relative to 130.60. And yesterday we came within a dollar of that and we bounced, beautiful bounce. But AMD did not do what Nvidia did. Look, we got the lower high, higher low, lower high, and we closed in an hourly EQ where Nvidia, Nvidia got the higher high. But as far as risk to reward, I say bottom fishing this weekly higher low compared to 130.60 makes sense. So if we have a bearish pullback and we get near 131, try it. And stop out if, if it loses 130, 40. I would stop out. All right, that's it for me. Thank you. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget about the swing report sell. It ends Sunday. All right, y'all have a great weekend. Use stop losses. TCGers, I'll see you in the room.